So I've returned to Photoshop. I have uh, the original sketch that I was working on previously open and uh, now I am going to place the Illustrator file that contains the text bubbles and frame edges. So I'm just looking for the file. And once I've uh, placed the image, um, then I can adjust it using the Move tool. I also have to adjust the size of the background image uh, because it's just a little bit uh, too large for the containing frame of my Illustrator file. So I use the Marquee tool and uh, just uh, Command-T to transform the scale of the image. And just reassure myself in the control bar that both the width and height have been adjusted similarly. So um, one of the things about the Illustrator file, it comes in as a smart uh, file, which means that I can click on the icon and get myself back into Illustrator to make changes if I need to. But right at the moment, I don't anticipate any changes. However, there is a, an anomaly with Illustrator text. When it is placed in Photoshop, it doesn't come in as 100% black. So I have an action script, which I use to uh, turn the text into 100% black, which I'm just going to run now. And that leaves a copy, a rasterized copy of the text, which is the one that I have to work with. So I just turn off the smart file, just turn off the visibility, and just leave it there on the layer. And now I'm coming in close to just reassure that my action script worked and the black is good. Sometimes I just have to do an eyedropper test with my info panel. So in terms of inking, I'm working with uh, a brush tool, uh, a fairly hard brush. Uh, Photoshop has a number of brushes. But because the comics that I reproduce are um, pretty well photocopied uh, type of uh, production, at least it was photocopied for many years, now I'm getting them printed, but I still, I, I really quite like the, the kind of stark black and white, so I use a hard brush to ink. I ink on a separate layer so that I'm not um, inking straight over the drawing because I want to be able to work with the drawing itself. Um, I can change the opacity of the layer that I work on and that allows me to see the drawing through the inking that I'm doing. I start off with a, a very loose, uh, very crude inking blocking in. One of the things with working digitally is that you can't really, you don't really get a sense of the whole page as you're working because you have to go in so close. So it's um, with a with a very sort of crude brush you can stay, you can zoom out a little bit better and see what you're doing in terms of the whole page and then I go back over and ink. Um, you'll notice in this film that I'm, I'm speeding it up because the presentation is for uh, a limited uh, time period so I've speeded up a lot of this inking process. Um, normally, my um, start to finish time with uh, digital inking is around two hours of work.
So now I'm further refining the um, the more heavier inking that I did earlier. And just as a final act, I have to uh, work on the edges of the panel edges. You know, I had overextended them beyond the, the border so that I would be able to just erase them and have them as a uh, act as uh, actual separators between the um, moments in the comic page. In addition, I also have I created um, my own Bende screen which I used uh, to help with texture and shading. And uh, they were used in traditional comics uh, as a kind of a painted on process. But this is, uh, this is purely digital. So that's the end of the, this demonstration.